you made it to level two, deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and then awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello and welcome to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and we have a wonderful and very special dynamic show in store for you today. Joining me from Ontario is Aisha Hogan. Aisha, before I read off your bio, I want to welcome you. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Hi, Tomas. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm so I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, I'm thrilled to have you. This is going to be a lot of fun. And guys, is. this is going to be a, a free flowing and wonderful conversation because that's kind of the way we roll here. So Aisha is a high speed vision manifesting catalyst right, who creates space for people to heal and practice self mastery. As an energy worker, hypnotherapist and self mastery coach, Aisha is known for creating dynamic integrative protocols that help release people from pain, removing external masks. She guides them to masterful and impactful living. While Aisha works with her clients, helping them find their mastery within and out of pain causing diseases, she felt a deep calling to do something more. A vision received during meditation let her know that she wouldn't be doing it alone. As founder in chief of iAwesome, Aisha is building a collaborative interactive social learning community launching in October 2020. The International Academy of Universal Self Mastery is already 150 faculty members strong with holistic and alternative teachings for the mind, body, and spirit. I love it. iAwesome, Asha, Aisha, awesome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I sound pretty impressive. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think it's, I think it's great. And this brings up a lot of questions for us. I awesome. This is the focus I know from working yeah. with you on I awesome because I'm also involved with it. Tell us a little bit more about how the name I awesome came about for starters. Oh, when I first um, got the vision to do this academy or university, well, first started off as a university. So it was mm -hmm. called University of Self Mastery. And one, then two, then three people came up to me and they're like, Esha, you're going to have trouble with this word university because it's an accredited, um, accredited educational word. It's not allowed in some states for people without having an actual university to use it. And so, you know what? I thought I'll change this. And so I changed it and I thought about it and I, you know, I got on GoDaddy or wherever I was looking for domain names and stuff. Yeah. So I found, I, I finally settled on Academy of Universal Self Mastery and I got that and I was really excited about it. And I kept, I was just going to use that Academy of Universal Self Mastery. But one of the things is the word awesome is a word that I use all the time. Like I okay. say it yeah. all day long. Everything is awesome. This is awesome. That's awesome. And what I didn't realize until one of the faculty pointed out to me is the acronym for the Academy was Academy of Universal Self Mastery was AUSM Awesome. Right. Which was completely a synchronistic <laughs> coincidence. I love it. Right. Which was great. And then, yeah. um, so I looked up for that domain name, couldn't find it. It was taken. Don't even know who has it. Nothing would come up for it, but I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get it. So since we have academy or sorry, faculty members from all over the world and we're teaching in different languages and everything, like it's just this beautiful global community. It's, it's international. So we called it international Academy of universal self mastery added an I right. at the beginning. So now it's I awesome and mm -hmm. feels a little bit like a mantra. And yes. so, so that's what it is now. It's iawesome.com, which is amazing. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it how I love it how it all turned around, and I love the name. 
Yeah, I love the name too. It's really resonant with people because it has the word awesome in it. So it's got to be cool. Yeah. It's got to so, be cool. It's got to be awesome. It's got to be awesome. And we'll be talking during this conversation about I Awesome and the global community, the global holistic and spiritual community that's coming together really rapidly. But let's talk about a phrase that comes up in this, and that is self-mastery. You're a self-mastery yeah. coach. I Awesome began as the university of self-mastery. So this is a buzz phrase for you in your life. Yes. What does self-mastery mean to you? Well, one of the modalities that I work with, and I do some energy work as well. So I am a Reiki master, as uh -huh. most spiritual people are. Like, you know, that's a pretty common thing. And but when people started calling me healer, it really used to make me cringe. Okay. Uh -huh. And because it's like, I always knew that it wasn't me doing the healing. I wasn't healing anybody, right? I was just purely a conduit, a channel. And this energy was coming from somewhere bigger than I could ever be. So it was okay. this, this huge energy coming from the universe. And it was the intention of the client, the recipient right? Because that healing comes from them. If they don't want it, it can't happen. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So the healer is actually the client, not me, right? So at the end of the day, I just felt people calling me a healer. It felt like a lie to me because I'm like, that's not me that's doing it. I can't do it. I can't heal you unless you want it. Mm -hmm. And the healing's not coming from me. It's coming right. from the universe, from source. And it's also from, from your intention to be healed, your want mm -hmm. to be healed. And that's not something that I can give you. You either have it or you don't. So to me, the person who's the healer is actually the recipient. Okay. So right. self-mastery to me is that, you know, Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot when he says things like, you know, people are 99.9 .9, and a bunch of nines after that percent energy and 0.01% mm -hmm. this actually this body. That's a complete illusion, right? Yeah. Well, if that's the case, and if we are connected to everything and connected to the universe, then that means, well, the universe created the universe. It created itself and it created all the planets and the galaxies and everything and it knows everything. So if we're 99.9% .9 of that energy, what don't we know? What limits do we really have, right? The only limits that we have is what's put onto us by this 0.01% of this elusive thing that we think that we are. Yeah. And to me, that just means that I want to help people reach in and grab it, their limitlessness. Their limitlessness? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a word. And I, I think that uh, that really describes it. So I haven't heard that, that it's less, much less than 1%. So why does that less than 1% hold so much power, do you think? You know, I think that's part of our journey. It's mm -hmm. part, you know, when I think about, even when I think about that voice in our head, that inner critic, Right. I always see it like, you know, those military boot camps and mm -hmm. they've got that, that rope wall that you've got to climb and you've got to get to the other side. Right. Because our, our inner critic is so loud and our gut voice, if you will, or our energy voice, our spirit is so quiet. And I wondered why that was. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know what? It's because we have to climb the wall. We have to overcome okay. the inner critic and make it and love it. We have to learn to love that voice that bashes the crap out of us. Like we have to learn to love that voice and make it part of who we are in a more positive way. And that means climbing that wall. Okay. Yeah. And, and the inner critic, which is very loud, I think everybody that's breathing can relate to that shouting at us and, and um, kind of trying to get our attention in every way. Uh, how have you done work on loving the inner critic as, as you put it. I mean, what practices have worked for you? That's a really great question. I, I'm glad that you asked me that. So I one day sat down and I did a contemplation meditation. Okay. And I asked and I was like, you know, I would like a really easy way to deal with my inner critic, to handle it in a way that I want to make it a team player, but I want it to be so easy that I can teach my clients how to do it. Yeah. 
right? So of course, you know, with contemplation meditations, the answers don't come right away. And um, a few days later, I was sitting at my breakfast table and I didn't, I forgot, I didn't realize it was March break. And I had just opened up a new business. And when no one was calling me that week, I was going into a little bit of a panic mode when I realized, oh my God, Aisha, it's March break, right? Mm -hmm. So while I'm having my breakfast, you know, when fear sets in, inner critic really starts yakking in your head, right? So yes. It started yakking and before I knew it, I was throwing my fork down and I was like, Harold, shut the F up. But I said the F word. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and then I started laughing because I was like, who's Harold? And, and, and who the heck am I talking to right now? And I realized <laughs> that I had named my inner critic. Oh, okay. And by naming it, I created a division because it's no longer me. It's an energy that's in me, but it's not me. That's not Aisha talking to me. That's Harold talking to me. And because now I've created division, now I can talk to Harold and I can have a conversation and be like, you know what? This is what I need from you and nothing else. And this body is my vehicle. And if you don't play nice the way I want you to, I can kick you out. I'll just mm -hmm. stop and let you out. Right. And I took control of Harold, but in a way of also loving him and saying, Hey, you know, we could do some things together. You can give me choices. You can give me options. You can give me a kick in the butt when I need it, but in a very positive way. Okay. And all of a sudden things started getting very quiet in my head. And now Harold never speaks to me like that anymore. Right. And how long has it been since you named the inner critic Harold? It's been about two and a half years now. Okay. All right. Right. And I hate the name Harold. I actually tried to change his name, but I can't. Like he just, it just doesn't have that same. It's like me calling you Bob right now. Like it's just mm, not yeah. your name, right? So mm. I just, I couldn't change his name. And I started teaching this to some of my clients and they loved it, right? They were mm. like immediately had that quiet in their head and they had, they could take control, but in a very loving way. Okay. Yeah. And this is really, really interesting. So did you see that, that your clients were able to do the same thing and take control lovingly by naming the critic? Yep. And I said, you know, don't okay. be embarrassed to even like, there'd be days where Harold would pop up and start talking. And I would literally say things in my mind, like Harold, that's your shit. Go deal with it. Come back when you're done. Mm -hmm. Like that's got nothing to do with me. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and also. It, and it, and it worked, right? Mm. And it worked. And, you know, now when I'm, when I'm thinking about things, when I get options, I know it's him, but it's more in a way of collaboration rather than in a way of being bossy and mean and making me feel like I'm not good enough. Okay. All right. And this was about, as you say, two and a half years ago. Yeah. So, okay. Well, so in the, those two and a half years, how monumentally have you seen your life change? Because I did not know you two and a half years ago. No, you didn't. Um, my life changed a lot. I mean, I moved to some small cottage town, like my, where my cottage is to like run my business from here. Who does okay. that? Um, you know, with population 2000 from a city oh, all right. of like, you know, hundreds and thousands and millions of people. I moved to this little place expecting to have an, a successful business. And all of a sudden online, like I found a lot of my fears like a lot of things that I was limiting myself in okay. were starting to fade away because mm. I didn't have somebody telling me that I wasn't good enough. I didn't have those constant reminders, right. Of okay. what is, is not good about me. Right. And so right. it was more about now I can take chances. Now I can stretch my limits. Now I can, you know, it's a question that I always ask what, you know, how far this is, I think I don't have the exact words. It's from T.S. Eliot. And it's like, how far, the only way you can know how far you can go is by taking a risk and going there, right? Yeah. Like, and actually yes. pushing yourself and going. And only that is only how you know how far you can go. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because if you stay in the same place, you'll, you'll never know. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by, you know, naming my inner critic was only one of many techniques that I've, I've used over the years. But that one, I think, was so helpful for so many. Yes. And, and it's unique as I haven't, I haven't heard that. Sometimes people will have an imaginary friend as we're, as, and when we're kids and things like that, but to actually use that in a loving, constructive manner is really interesting. It's very different. And you mentioned letting go of some of your fears when you moved out of the city and to your current location. So uh, would you care to comment on any of what those fears were? 
Yeah. So this was a big move for me because my okay. whole life, um, I felt very isolated internally. I felt isolated from people. And I think it has a lot to do with a big energy field. Like I carry a really big energy. Um, I never knew that really about, I mean, I knew there was reasons that I was intimidating to people and not so much my clients. I never felt intimidating to them, but just men in general mm. intimidated mm. by me. Okay. Um, girlfriends, friends, like intimidated. I, this was a word that I've heard my entire life. And when my, I had some gifts of my own that started coming out and, you know, I started becoming Clara cognizant. I started becoming uh -huh. Clara audient. Um, I'm, I'm highly intuitive. Um, I can talk to dead people. You know, there's these things that I can do. I don't really put it on my repertoire of who I am. I can, I use it with my clients, but I don't really say that that's, I don't advertise it anywhere. It's sure. just part of who I am. And, but when they started coming out, when these things started coming out, I was actually starting to push them away because I knew that it was going to make me even more different than everyone else. And so I was going to feel even more isolated. And I got to a point where it was like, Aisha, you need to make a decision. Okay. You know, you can't play yeah. on the fence because that's not working for you. Like you need to choose one fence or the other. You either shut down everything that you are and just play small or you get on the other side, you take a different road and you go like, you know what? Don't care anymore what other people think of me and, and I'm going to make it work in my life. You know, those people don't rule my life. I do. I'm in control of my life and right. you know, my decisions affect me. So I came out to this place with 2000 people and doing the work that I do. And I thought that they were going to burn crosses on my front lawn. Like that's oh. what I was a little bit worried about, but instead, you know, they were very responsive and, 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 um, respectful of my work, mm. which I was shocked actually. Cause I thought, you know, it's a small town, you know, we're driving around in pickups and drinking beer. And I was like, you know, this is, I don't know if this is going to be the place for me. We'll see, but, it, <laughs> but here I am. And it, it's, it's been beautiful. So. Well, are you driving around in a pickup and drinking beer now that you're there? No, no, I no. still have, no, I just got my SUV and I drink wine from time to time. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, so this is really interesting. And I think that you're on to a whole um, lot of deep subject matter with this big energy that you talked about. So have you been always your whole life aware of this big expansive energy? As you describe yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so as a child, you know, I've got a name like Aisha. I come from a country called Turkey. Mm -hmm. My mother sewed my dresses uh, when I went to school. So you could imagine I was already a kind of an outcast to begin with. And um, on top of it, you add in this energy and the, I've been like, I was born this way. And at that time I didn't know it, but I felt like, like now as I'm older, I realized that not only is my energy big, it can be very compelling for people but it can also be very repelling for people because oh. it also has this knack of making people, it reflects on them. It makes them take a look at their things that they need to fix on themselves and they don't mm -hmm. like that so much. Sure. So it can be, if they're not ready for it, it can be very repelling as well. And I always, I, I, stood in, I stood in my power, I stood in my energy, I accepted it as I got older, but there was always this, there's always been this piece of me that has always considered it a curse. Oh, okay. And it isn't until recently, until the last like three weeks of my life that I've finally changed it from being a curse and seen it as a gift. And in that revelation, I, I sat down and I actually cried for two hours because this thing that I always thought was a curse was actually my gift and, and that epiphany Mm. It was probably a very, it was a very happy, but super surreal moment and just a lot of release. Okay. Happened. Yeah. Yes. And three weeks ago. So just recently. Just three weeks ago. Yes. Okay. Well, if you don't mind for our listeners, walk us through that because it was so recent though you, you yeah. had seen all of this big energy as a curse. What prompted this sudden switch? Okay. Well, I awesome showed up, um, as, as a med as, as a vision for me three months ago. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those visions that was so clear that I felt like I was as, as, as present as I am here talking to you right now, I was that present in that vision and I could see everything clearly. I could see through my own eyes. I got the vision of I awesome and I went with it. 
and I created iAwesome. Well, I was, I'm, I'm very, I, I helped to create iAwesome. I really believe the creation came from somewhere else, but I'm definitely a sure. conduit. So, yeah. um, but I went with it and COVID has been a blessing for me in that way because I probably would not have paid attention um, mm -hmm. at any other time in my life. Um, so I went with it. Now we're over 150 faculty and it keeps right. growing. We were already talking about additional academies. There's all these, these things that are happening. But three weeks ago, um, you know, I, I have to say in this three months, we've had a crazy evolution. I originally started a council with some friends and for one reason or another, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And when I had to let them go out of the council, as I brought people, other people in to replace them, just because they, you know, as it was evolving, they just didn't either have the ability or the availability to, to do what I awesome needed. And, you know, I've lost friendships over mm -hmm. this. Sure. Um, one of the friends was a, the person who was creating our website. Mm -hmm. And what I found was they were actually sabotaging I awesome. And I was completely in denial about this. Like I was just like, it, no, this can't be happening. And I knew in my gut, like my gut was screaming at me, but I was just in my heart was saying, how could they like, it's just, I can't see this. Right. So when I finally opened my eyes and noticed what was happening, you know, I had to do some really fast footwork and, and, and actually seize our website back. Right. And it wasn't until after all that dust settled after that, and we have a new person now look, a new, amazing, awesome, uh, just gifted person looking after our website now, that I sort of sat down and I thought, oh my gosh. You know, I, there was all this talk about holding space for people and, uh, you know, holding this person, holding space for me and, you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. There was all this talk about holding space when I finally, figured, oh my gosh, of course I'm, I, I have I awesome. Because my question always before was, why me? Why did I get this vision? Okay. Right? What's, so, what's so different about me than anyone else right? Mm -hmm. that, you know, that does work like I do and loves people the way that I do? Like, why, why would I get this vision? And all of a sudden, it, it sort of clicked in that of course it is because I can hold space for I awesome and every single person in it with no effort at all. Yeah. For me, it's just who I am. I can, I can hold on to it and protect it and, and just be able to see who is going to try. And because there's always deception, there's jealousy, there's people's fear, there's all of that stuff, but I'm able to sense it really quickly and I'm able to act on it really quickly. And it was that moment where I sat down and went, that's why I have this big energy. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. I have a soul contract clearly to deal with I awesome, to bring I awesome into the world. And in order to do that, I need to have this energy. I need to be able to hold her and, and I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is just recently. So three weeks, this is a, this is great. So we're really having this conversation while all of this is going on, yeah. quite literally, quite literally. So then you referred to a minute ago, the vision where I awesome came, kind of came into your, your mind, your consciousness. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that, if you could, please. Sure. So I, you know, I've got a very busy brain. I'm always thinking about things. And um, I was working so hard at my own clinic uh -huh. um, the chakra house of healing. I was really, you know, I work with clients with trauma and fibromyalgia and all this kind of stuff. This is what I do. This is, this is my specialty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course when COVID hit, you know, everything got really quiet really fast. So I sat down and after the first three weeks, I was going through some crazy stuff in the first three weeks. I was, I don't know if my empath in me went crazy or what it was, but you know, one day I'd be really happy. The next day I would start crying for nothing. Like I wasn't even sad. I don't even know why I was crying. So I was just like, there was these weird things happening to me for, for a few weeks. And then I went in to have a meditation and um, there's a couple of places that I like to go to start my meditation. It helps me to, to focus. Okay. And one is I, sometimes I like to climb a mountain and I never know who's going to be or what's going to be at the top of the mountain. Sometimes nothing. Sometimes there's some surprises up there for me when I get there. And, um, 
this particular day though, I was going to a healing center that I want to open one day on the beach in Costa Rica next okay. to everybody else's spiritual centers that they want to open up in Costa Rica. I'll just be next door to one of those. So I know this place clearly. I know everything about it. So I was getting, just getting ready to walk down the pathway to open the door. Like I have a million times before to get the, the smell of this place and to see it the way that I always do. So I was getting ready to do that. And instead, I ended up on this massive green field. Okay. And so I'm on this field, and there's thousands and thousands of people on the field. And everybody's dressed in white, and everybody is on these yellow gold yoga mats. And at that moment, something very strange happened to me that's never happened before. It's like I left the body here, and I landed in my body on the field. Like I felt myself drop into the body. And I could see through my own eyes and I was looking at a microphone, couldn't hear what I was saying. I think I was leading a meditation. I guess it wasn't important for me to hear. Um, and I remember thinking, well, how did I just get here? What is going on? Like I was thinking that. And all of a sudden in my head, I heard, I shall look right. Mm -hmm. So I look off to the right and I saw this beautiful old university campus, bunch of buildings. And it had a kind of a Hogwartsy feel to it, not looked like Hogwarts in any way, but kind of had that feel to it. It reminded me of that. And it just had this amazing energy just pulsing off it like a heartbeat. And I remember thinking, this is beautiful, but why am I seeing this? And, you know, usually in visions, if anyone's had them, they'll know that sometimes they're kind of blurry. They're not like really clear. But this, because I left this body and landed on my body there. It, I was there. So I could see it clearly, like crystal clear, like HDTV. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I'm looking up at the sky and I'm, and I'm talking to God and I'm going, why are you showing me this? Right. Why am I here? Yeah. And how do you want me to do this? And do you know that it's COVID down here? Like, how am I going to do this? Right. So this was like, a lot of questions in my mind. And when I left the meditation and came back here, I was still looking at my ceiling, asking the same questions, like, how, like, what do you want me to do with this? And how am I supposed to do this? And over the next couple of days, the, the, the answers were coming and they were coming loud and they were coming, like I was tripping over them. Like there was no way that I could avoid it. And you know, one thing led to another. And before I knew it, you know, where I was building a council, and before I knew it, I was starting to bring um, faculty in. But I think the most profound thing, the, the next most profound thing, was that the first person who asked me, Aisha, what is the business plan? Like, how is this going to work? You know, how does the structure of this work and all of this? I was actually in my mind ready to say, I don't actually know. That's what I was going to say. Sure. And I opened my mouth and I talked for a solid hour about how everything was going to lay out about every aspect, the details. And the interesting thing was I actually never knew what the next word was going to be coming out of my mouth because I mm -hmm. felt like it wasn't me talking, like somebody was using my mouth. And I was sitting back just listening. Okay. And it was just the most incredible feeling. And with everything that's happened after that since then, just everything that I have asked for for I awesome shows up nothing's ever showed up for me like this. So like, oh. it's like I, I ask for something for I awesome and it shows up. And now I have this incredible, you know, council of eight and I sit down and we were at our board, like at a, sorry, a council gathering last Sunday and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at everyone and I'm thinking, I only know one person on this council for a long period of time. Everybody else has been brought. Everybody else has shown up and you know, one of the girls, I mean, she showed up on my Facebook page, Selena, mm -hmm. on my newsfeed. We weren't even friends. I'd never even heard of her before. Okay. And she showed up and, you know, I was with some video that she was doing and I felt compelled to watch. So I was watching it and then instantly fell in love with her. And I was like, she, mm -hmm. you know, I need to speak to this girl. And, you know, and everyone else that's kind of shown up over time, Haviz and Dylan and the, the people that are on our council, I'm like, we're not missing anything. You know, we're not missing anything and we've become a family in such a very short period of time. And we work so cohesively together and it's just this beautiful thing. And I just sit there and go, how did this happen? Like, like how, and I know how, 
you know, but there's still that human part of me that goes like, how did this happen? Like, how did this happen in three months? So it's, it's just this, it's an awesome thing. It is an awesome thing. It is. And uh, for the listener, I am also on this council. So uh, yes. I, I, can, I can attest to that. Um, and the high speed, let's talk about the high speed because I've also <laughs> asked myself the same thing. How did this happen? Because I, I remember first speaking to you about this in May and in here we are in August and we're in a completely different world. So you know, let's talk about how you're personally managing the high speed uh, you know how do you keep um, keep your your self care going you know how do you stay on top of it one day or the next when we wake up well we can wake up tomorrow and we'll be completely different people it'll be completely yeah. different it, like yeah. it, it changes from day to day it's, it's insanity yes. it's it's weirderful <laughs> my new word is weirderful it's weird and wonderful so um most nights i go to bed in awe you know, just amazed by the people that I've met that day and the things that have happened and transpired throughout the day. And I get almost too, so excited that I can't even almost sleep some nights because I, you know, I'm like, is tomorrow, can tomorrow actually be better than today? Like, is that even possible? Right. So there's, there's that feeling all the time. Yes. But we've been through, we started off on a platform, like, you know, like a, like an online platform. We found a platform. We started on that. We found, we outgrew that rapidly. So then we ended up on a WordPress, like on a site, which this other web development company had started. And then we had to, to get rid of, to start a brand new one. We're on a third site inside three months and we're launching yes. in October. And it's like, it's like beautiful. It's a beautiful thing that's forming right now. And even the person who's building it, is like nothing works. Like the, these things don't usually happen this fast. Like everything is happening so quickly. And just the people that are being brought in, the faculty that are coming, it's, I thought that, you know, them having to wait to get onto the site that we would lose faculty, but we're not. And everybody is engaged and everybody is right. waiting and they're referring more people. And we've got academies that are asking to be a part of our academy, to have us like to, to be a satellite academy of ours. And, you know, we're now we're starting um, with, we're, we're starting, we're starting a, an internet radio station. Right. And then, and then on top of it, I've just started I Awesome Magazine, which is basically going to be our course calendar okay. because we're going to have so many courses and it's, and it's not just an online platform for courses. It was interesting. When this started coming out, I had to do some research. And the research that I did was I just needed some numbers. I'm a numbers pe person too. So I was doing okay. some numbers. And yeah. last year, $165 billion was spent on online courses. People spent $165 billion on online courses. And that's a huge industry and it's growing like crazy. It's probably one of the biggest industries now. Only 9% of those people finish their courses. Oh, really? Okay. Because there's no one there to motivate them. There's no accountability, mm. right? There's not, there's no one to, for them. And not only that, these people take it, this knowledge and, you know, there's this saying that knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power, right? Knowledge is like the gas in your car. If you don't drive your car, who cares how much gas is in your car? It's the same thing. So you can have all the knowledge in the world. People come and say, oh, I read this self-help book and that self-help book. And it doesn't matter. What are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. Right? So you know it, but then who right. cares if you're not doing anything? It's useless. It's like a bunch of encyclopedias gathering dust in your library. Like who cares? Right? So iAwesome is different because we are a full social platform, just like any of those other social platforms out there. We are a social platform where there are timelines, where you can make friends, where you can connect with people and where every single course has a group attached to it so that now students can speak with one another. They can have study partners. They can, it's a virtual classroom. The teacher is involved, interactive. So you now have the support that you need to help you in your self mastery. Yes. And the other really cool thing is we're not even allowing any marketing. There's no marketing allowed. There are no ads allowed. No one can sell anything to anyone. 
outside of, you know, what we're doing with our courses and even our courses, there's no selling. They're just there, right? There's, there's tons and tons of complimentary courses, lots of complimentary courses. There's going to be, yes, some paid courses as well. Um, but lots of complimentary courses and it's a place where you can be empowered in your self-development. You're not alone anymore. And there's so many people who are awakening or they're noticing something different about them is happening and they don't understand it. And it's causing a lot of, it's causing a, causing a lot of identity crisis in yeah. people because they yeah. they can't go back to the way that they were, but they don't know how to deal with who they are. And they feel like they can't tell anybody because there's something going on and are they crazy? Right? So there's all these things that are happening to people now in this time, like this, mm -hmm. we've just begun into this shift. That's or right. whatever you want to call it, call it whatever you want, but we just started. And this is all happening. It was subtle before, but now there's some big steps happening in this and we're in it. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot of people are waking up and they're going to need help. They're going to need a place to be where they're going to be accepted. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that's critical because this is happening at high speed, warp speed. And so many people are going through what you just mentioned, um, all of this transformation and the shift. So let's talk a little bit more about that because it's live. It's going on right now as we speak and people are waking up a different person tomorrow. Some people might not even know what's going to happen in 30 minutes. Right. which is true anyway, but everything is moving so quickly. Uh, you know, where are we, where are we headed to, do you suppose, collectively? You know, I've had a lot of visions about this. Okay. And yeah. interestingly enough, I don't know how to put it into play, but there's been a vision that keeps showing up for me. And a few years ago, I had this, this, this really lucid dream. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll mention it in a second. But what I've been sure. seeing is this, like, it's like a, I want to call it like, a, you know, there's so many different, let me, let me, I'm just trying to find the best way to do, to say this. Sure. So the universe is like a hologram, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So it's like this hologram. So, the, so earth and everything else has, there's other dimensions, there's other earths, there's other, you know, we're not the only ones. You and I are having the same conversation on some other earth and maybe I'm the host and you're the guest or, you know, there's these other things that are happening. And I feel like this planet, this dimension, this place that we're here right now, we're so messed up with fear and hate and hunger and all of these things that are actually holding us down rather than raising us up and keeping our vibration down that instead of ending us in an ice age, or ending us in a flood, there's almost gonna be this, I don't even know how to explain it, this shift and this like a rip, a tear that's gonna split us in half. And those people, have you guys, there might be, have you ever, did you remember the Malkovich? The Malkovich, uh, I don't know what's called, the Malkovich theory, the Malkovich shift, the Malkovich something or other, where things started changing, yes. only some people knew that it was changing. Right. So for instance, right. the Coca-Cola thing, it has an asterisk in the middle. First of all, who puts an asterisk between two words? Like that's not even a thing. And I remember I have muscle memory of the hyphen because as a child, I used to play with the hyphen on the bottle. Ah, okay, right. right? So I do remember yes. the hyphen very clearly, right? Mm -hmm. So now when someone says, oh, it's always been an asterisk, I'm like, no. It hasn't. And I kind of think that those things were like almost like a practice shift. And some people remember, and but most people don't. Right. Right. So I feel like there's a bigger shift coming. And in that shift, the people that stay in one place are not going to remember those of us who are not there anymore. They're going to have a memory of a different life. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not like they're going to go, oh, all of a sudden that person's not here and I miss them. It's not even going to be that. They're going to have a memory of a different life that we weren't even there. Okay. And then there's going to be this new place. And in this new place, are we all going to remember? I don't know. I don't know if we're all going to remember. I think some of us will. But I see this, I see myself walking beside a highway. And you know, in those evacuation movies, Yes. where there's all these cars that are like all over the place and you know people run around everywhere well there's yeah. all these cars but there's no people mm. it's like the people mm. have just disappeared and i'm walking and i'm walking for some reason i i am like all hooked on walking east hmm. 
and people are starting to join me. But there's no worry about food or hunger and everybody's calm and relaxed and we're all just walking east and we're all headed somewhere that we don't even know where we're going, but we're going. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the dream, one of the girls that was part of us, that part of our group that was walking, she, she saw this police car and she grabbed the gun out of the police car and she looked at me and she said, do we need this? And I was like, no, we don't need that. And she put it back. We're in a true evacuation. Everybody picking up everything, right? Like, you know, so we weren't doing that. And, you know, days later we arrive at this place, this forest, this lodge. And I remember somebody running up to me and saying, Aisha, hurry up. We've been waiting. You have to sign off on this logo. I don't even know. You know, oh. dreams, are, dreams are still weird, right? So I go upstairs into yes. this lounge or this lodge and upstairs and they show me this logo of these antlers. Hmm. And there are two antlers with this circle in the middle. And they're like, just sign off on this. And they're waiting for you to talk outside. So I signed it off and I was walking towards to go outside. And then I woke up. Now that dream was years ago, but for some reason it keeps coming up now. Okay. Like it's very present, almost like it's something that has happened, but it hasn't happened. So I don't know why this keeps showing up like a, like a memory, like something that I've already been through or something like that. So it's just, a, it's a very interesting thing, but I do feel like there's going to be almost like that Malkovich split or that shift where things are going to change for people, but there's going to be some people are going to stay in this place that's full of fear and hate. Mm -hmm. And some of us are not going to be there anymore. I think it's going to be almost like a vibrational shift. And the people yeah. who choose to stay will stay and they're just going to forget. Right. Yes. And, and I think you hit on exactly what I was going to ask you. It's their choice to stay, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We and always it, have choice. We always have free will. As humans, we were given free will. Right. So where we but part of that free will means that we don't want them to suffer anymore. So that's going to be basically they just they're going to remember differently, just like they did with the Coca-Cola bottle or any of the other million things that changed during Malkovich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, this is this is so interesting. I'm really glad that you went into detail on this because there are so many people right now that are having experiences that they um, have never had before, uh, you know, call them energetic downloads or all of these experiences that maybe they have, have never had. And uh, why do you suppose right now this is going on for so many people? I think partly because we can't keep going the way we've been going. Okay. You know, we forget that everything is a living thing, even if it's a rock, it has vibration and frequency. And this planet, mm -hmm. we have been abusing her in a huge way. Now, I've never in my whole life been like a tree hugger kind of person, but I'm getting that way for sure. Okay. Um, but, you know, you know, when we carry so much negative energy, it begins to manifest physically in right. our bodies, you know, fibromyalgia, cancer, all these, you know, it's all energy based. It is all energy based. It doesn't matter what it comes from a lot of negativity that we're carrying around. So all of a sudden you look at the planet, look at all the things that have been happening. We've had tsunamis, floods. You know, yeah. we've had fires that rage out of control. We have all these things that are happening. We forget that this earth is a living thing and we've been abusing her and she was getting sick. Mm -hmm. You know, how could she not be? We're just, we're, we're blowing up bombs inside the planet. We're constantly feeding her, you know, radioactive material. It's garbage everywhere. Fear, hate, anger, rage discrimination, all of these, these awful things that are happening, suffering everywhere, hunger, where there shouldn't be hunger, there is enough food. So it's just all these things are happening and she's feeling it. Right. Yeah. Right. How could she not be somehow it's starting to manifest in her physically because there's earthquakes and floods and all these different things that are volcanoes going off, like things happening and people are being oblivious yeah. to all of this right? I look at COVID right now. People are so wrapped up in COVID. My question is, where's the bees? Okay. Right? right? Like, it's like, I live in a place where usually my porch every morning is covered in these like spiders that are the size of a knuckle, right? Okay. Because I'm near the water. 
And every day I have to go out and I have to clear my porches off, right? I, I, this summer, not even once. Where's the spiders? Okay. Not one. I planted, yeah. I planted a garden. Most of my stuff didn't grow because not, there's been no bees to pollinate anything. No, no. Okay. Right. So it's like, and I've talked to other people and there's some places where there's lots and then people who expect bees like me, there's where I live, there's usually lots. I can't eat outside. Right. Oh, wow. Because of, you know, there's wasps and bees in there. <laughs> all the place, right. It's like, why, why, where are they? Yeah. That's what worries me. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's actually quite frightening right there. Uh, the lack of pollinators. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. Right. It and all is. of a sudden I see these pictures of, uh, that I've never heard of before. Where the heck did these giant bee killer monster hornets come from that rip the heads off honeybees? Like mm -hmm. they're the size of like my thumb. Like I'm like, where did these come from? I've been 55 years old. I've never, ever heard of this thing before. And now all of a sudden there's some monster bee killers out there. Mm -hmm. If that's not genetics, I don't know what is. So it's just like all of a sudden there's, we've been playing too much with nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's very true. And I think a lot of people would relate to that. And then here we are in the midst of a global pandemic where uh, people have, people's attention has been really captured by all of this. And yet all of this high speed transformation, call it ascension, call it whatever you will, is going on, which is, is quite fascinating. And here you are, right, on the cutting edge of it, having founded an online university and global learning platform. So, and it's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be massive. So I don't know if people yes. know about the, the 100th monkey syndrome, but that's one of the things that showed up for me during this in the last like three months, it kept showing up. Cool. Yeah. Tell us about that. So the 100th monkey syndrome, I'll just sort of give you the cold notes of it. So on this sure. island in Japan, there's these monkeys that, that were being researched and they would eat um, sweet potatoes that grew on the island. But you know, monkeys like humans do not like to eat dirt. So you know, they're eating, they're eating these, these dirty sweet potatoes, but they're spitting out all the dirt because it's not very palatable, right? Who wants that? So one young monkey decides to wash its potato. And a few monkeys started watching it and going, oh, and they start washing their potatoes, but the older monkeys are still eating the dirty potatoes. So eventually, you know, 20 monkeys, 40 monkeys, 60 monkeys, they're starting to wash their potatoes. They get to 80 monkeys, 90 monkeys, and then they you know, 95, and they hit the hypothetical hundredth monkey, right? Once that hundredth monkey washed its potato, then a message was sent to the collective. Okay. And then all the monkeys started washing their potatoes, but not just on this island, but all the surrounding islands mm -hmm. as well. So I feel that I awesome is the same. It's going to take a big bite out of raising frequency and vibration and having people see the the self mastery in them and once that hypothetical hundredth person whatever number that is understands that and their frequency and vibration rises it's going to tip the scales for our species and yes. basically it's going to change it for everyone and it doesn't have to be everyone it just has to be enough of us mm -hmm. and i feel that i awesome is that is that tool do I think it's going to be all hundred monkeys? No, maybe we're going to be 80 of them. And then someone else is doing something somewhere else and they're going to take up another five and they'll take another five. And, and all of us together are going to tip the scales. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the, the hundred monkeys. Yes. Because that I think is the way a lot of us see I awesome. So for people that are listening to this show, wondering, okay, what, um, what kind of courses can I take? What are you all offering? So what, what does that look like? You know, I'm so excited for the students. I, I really yeah. am like stoked and excited yeah. for the students. I honestly, when I first started this, I thought, wow, first of all, I'm going to tell people that they can't market. I'm probably not going to find one faculty member <laughs> because everybody no. has been trained to market, right? So, sure. you know, I'm telling them that they can't. All I want is their passion and their knowledge. And I don't want all their marketing stuff. They can leave that at the door, mm -hmm. right? And so that was the first thing. And then I thought, well, you know, how many different methodologies and modalities can be out there, right? Because I don't want a lot of repetition of the same thing over and over and over and over again. And here we are like at 150 faculty and I'm still missing topics. And, and it's this beautiful thing where 
each faculty member has taken certain topics that they like, certain methodologies and methods, and harmonize them in such a way that is just so unique to what they do. Mm -hmm. And they're coming here and they're going to teach that, right? Yeah. And there's going to be accredited courses and there's going to be certification courses and there's going to be um, just interest courses in both holistic, spiritual, alternative, clinical, mm -hmm. as well as um, business. Yeah. And it's funny that we're throwing business in there, but there's a lot of people, especially in this time, that are starting to run businesses on their own, and they really don't know what to do. Right. And there's even, you know, some of our own faculty that are probably struggling with some things with their businesses, right? So sure. at the end of the day, we also need to have that because that's part of our self-mastery is how do we magnetize money to us? How mm -hmm. do we run our businesses properly? Is just as important as how do we clear our blocks and our barriers and how do we open up our gifts and, you know, how do we do these things? So all of that, because a person is like a diamond. I always say that people are like diamonds mm -hmm. and every diamond has all these different facets to it, right? So for each facet, it has to be mastered. Each facet has to be mastered. Okay. Yeah. So this is a platform where people can choose from, well, it's going to be hundreds and hundreds of course offerings of various different experience levels and everything. And uh, this includes, this includes exercise too, doesn't it? Physical exercise. It includes exercise. It's for the, we've got a, we've got a group called body rock. That's going to have uh -huh. like song and yoga and dance. And, and um, I think there's even someone coming to do tap and like, there's all these different, when she first talked to me, I thought, I thought she meant like EFT tapping, but she mm -hmm. meant like tapping. So, you know, the old school tapping. So there's like, that's going to be a lot of body work we, we have the multicultural. These are just groups. These are not the courses, but we're doing some collaborative groups instead of people having their own groups, like some of these social media platforms, people have their own groups. We decided to make some collaborative groups where, you know, different teachers will be teaching different things at different times and they will be complementary. Right. Right. Um, we have one called multicultural cuisine where people can learn some, you know, raw chefing, and mm -hmm. vegan cooking and healthy cooking and, and, and how to cook Mexican pastries healthy and all these different things, right? And then we have Gaia's Medicine, which mm -hmm. I can't wait because I got a binder full of potions and lotions. Right. And, you know, where you come in there and, we're, and, and no one's talking about a brand name of oils. No one's talking about a brand of anything. We're just talking about, you know, get this and get this. And why, why is cedarwood, you know, what are the benefits of this? And what are the benefits of that? And what happens when you put that with this? And, you know, so... Gaia's medicine is going to be great. And one of the other things I want to teach in there is about sacred hemp, right? So it's going to be a lot of teachers teaching a lot about Gaia's herbs and oils and different things that are available to us on this planet. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love that. I mean, it sounds like so many course offerings. And like you said, this is growing and we're 150 faculty members strong right now and counting for sure. So how can people access and find out more information about iAwesome? So right now, um, our homepage is up, so you can go there and become a student, or if you want to be a faculty member, I know that we're going to have okay. over 500 faculty, not for mm -hmm. launch, but we are looking at probably over 500 faculty. Um, so yeah, if you want to be a faculty member, we're still looking for people um, doing, like I'm still looking for sacred geometry. I would have thought that would have been full already, and I'm still looking for Ayurvedic medicine, right? So there's oh, some stuff that I'm yeah. still looking for. Um, some beautiful, passionate information that I'm looking for. And so they can go to become a student or they can become a faculty member. That's on iawesome.com. So I-A-U-S-M.com. Okay. Um, they can get information there. Um, we also have a Facebook group. We have a LinkedIn, you know, so there's, the, you know, we're all in all the different social platforms as well. Okay. So you can find us. I think in Twitter, we're Academy of USM. Um, on in Instagram, we're Universal Self Mastery. Yes. Um, so there's, there's different ways of, of getting to us. Um, and like I said, we're launching really, really soon. Like I'm super, super excited about it. And the great thing about it is, is that it's going to be a win, win, win for everyone. Yeah. And lots of different ways because of how we've set it up and structured our business model, but also that it's going to sustain everyone. And there is this sustaining that I really love. We have something called an appreciation program, which I'm, okay. like, yeah. which I'm like so happy about. Mm -hmm. 
And it was that last piece that we brought to the business model. And that was, you know, the students to enroll and be part of all of this is $9.99 a month. All right. But for every person that they bring to follow, to come in, to be a student, they get 50 cents per month per person. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Like, so it's not, it's, it's an appreciation of, we appreciate that you brought this person, right? So if you're paying $9.99 a month, well, if you bring 20 people, it's now zero. You've paid nothing. And if you bring more people, then you can put money towards one of the, the accredited courses or one of the courses that you want to take that are not, that are paid courses, or you can pay your rent, mm -hmm. whatever you want, right? So there's just this beautiful piece that we've added on both for the faculty and for the students as well, because we appreciate everything should be an energy exchange. If you're bringing something, you know, there yes. should be an exchange for that yeah. for you. Right. right. So I believe that we've become so used to getting things for free. Okay. And free is far too expensive. Free does not commit anyone to anything. Free has no value. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. That, literally, by definition, <laughs> it has no value, yeah. but it's very mm -hmm. expensive. It is super expensive because people put out their valuable content and their valuable. Yes. And, and, and nobody, like, I think about it, like, I was just having this conversation today. I, you know, I've, I've felt for some people who have come to me and they've said, Aisha, I really need your services, but I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've said, you know what, let me help you. And I've reached out and I've given them a program, you know, a three month program. Not one of them have ever finished it. Not okay. one of them have ever committed. Yeah. There's even been a lot of no shows. Right. Sure. But if someone oh, pays yeah. for the program, they will never not know. They will never be a no show. They will contact me ahead of time because my time has value for them. Right. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to be generous and give things to people, but we're going to give in a different way. There's still going to be mm -hmm. a lot for them to have loads for them to have. I think the teachers and the faculty have been so generous. So there's going to be so much for them to take part in that it's incredible. But I think that, you know, free we're getting too used to and it, it doesn't it does everyone's like what what can i get for free what can i get for free nothing yes. that's what you get for free nothing mm -hmm. because that that free thing doesn't matter to you okay yeah and i love that you've mentioned this here because i have a friend that says those who pay pay attention and yes. yeah yeah you're saying the exact same thing and i, I love that so for um the sake of clarity it's it's nine dollars and 99 cents is this u.s it's per US month. dollars. Yeah. Okay. $9.99 US per month. Or there's actually a really good annual fee as well. Okay. You save on three months worth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to pay annually. Um, and, and like I said, I wanted to create a way that they could make that back yeah. and yeah. still have access to all the content. Yes. Right. So that's now I feel like it's a really, it will sustain us all. Mm hmm right? Makes sense to me now because now it's like, yes, it will sustain us all. And it will be a win, win, win for everyone, not just spiritually and in our frequency and our vibration and our awakening, but also in our currency. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. And, and guys, for those tuning in, it's I A U S M I awesome.com. And I show one more thing before we wrap up that I, you touched on a few minutes ago. And this is one of the things that really makes, from my point of view, I awesome stand out. And that's the sense of community and the sense of doing things yes. together. Yeah, would you say a little bit more about that, what that means to you? I spent, oh God, the last three months, most of my days have been spent interviewing every single teacher that is part of I awesome every mentor, mm -hmm. every leader, every faculty member, every facilitator, because I wanted to make sure that every person that came in as a collaborator collaboration matters here. We, we can't do this alone. One person cannot be everything for everyone. It's not possible. Right. And I don't really even believe that collaboration before COVID would have worked. I think something has shifted and even in that. And you know, working together, now we can make a difference. And the reason why I interviewed every single teacher is I wanted to make sure that they still were in touch with their passion, mm -hmm. why they do what they do. Yeah. 
I interviewed some that were still all about the money and the minutes and, and how many can I, you know, give me the numbers. And I was just like, okay, you are not the right teacher for here because you're all wrapped up in the, in the marketing and you've forgotten your passion. Now it's just a numbers game for you. How many people can you sign up for things, but you're not, you're not, you've forgotten why you're doing it. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> And yeah. I wanted to make sure that the teachers that came to iAwesome are not a commodity. Mm -hmm. They're not a product. You know, the students that come in are not a commodity. They're not a product. The courses are not a commodity. Right. Everything is part of this beautiful community to, to, to help us all raise. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm glad that we talked about this because that's something that really stood out to me coming in as coming into the council and to the faculty as a serial solopreneur was the sense of teaming up with people, with like-minded people, with dynamic people. And it's, it's really I awesome. It's, it's such a wonderful place to be. And again, we're launching in October, this fall, and it's IAUSM.com. Okay. Yeah. And even if you like, when you go in and you sign up as a student, like not as a sign up, right? You go on our list, right? To become, because right now that it's not open, right. right? But you can get on our list. We're not like going to be sending you marketing where it says, Hey, we're opening up and you're going to be spending this and blow and, you know, upsell, upsell, upsell and 99,000 emails from us. Like that's not what's going to happen. In fact, our, our media team did something really interesting and they've put out a quiz. Mm-hmm. You know, are you a seed? Are you a phoenix? Or are you a diamond? Okay, yeah. Right? We wanted immediately to create value for people, to already start teaching them, to already start guiding them, to already start allowing them to start doing some self introspection. What we're not doing is a lot of like sell, 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 and 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 barraging them with emails every day mm -hmm. now. So that's not what's happening, right? And then they filled out this quiz and they get this great response, and you know, there's some follow up, but just and it's all about value right? About helping yes. them while we're waiting, you know, right. while we're all waiting for the doors to open, you know, we want to already start with people. We already mm -hmm. want to start their journey. Right. Yeah. And it's a journey that's set up to be lifelong with all kinds of offerings. And, and for those of us out there listening, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of this and I've spoken with a number of these faculty myself and it's fascinating the number of things that are out there so there is more than enough to sustain you on your journey of transformation whatever that looks like wherever you are in the process is more than enough to make you uh, very interested and involved and engaged for a long period of time. So and this it's global and it's global yeah. and that's really important so global not because it's on the internet right? It's global mm -hmm. because we have teachers coming in teaching from different countries in different languages Yes, as well, right? Literally. So, I mean, I've got people coming in from Turkey. We've got people coming in from Brazil. We've got people coming in from Russia. We've got people who are coming in from Mexico, you know, so, you know, languages. We've also got people teaching in different languages as well. So there's no reason why someone cannot step into their power. Yeah. Yeah, and, and growing. We're going to add hundreds of additional faculty members. Yes. This is something that we're obviously very, very excited about. I'm excited to be a, a part of it. And I, like you, I feel really great for the students because this is just a massive, beautiful community for them yes. to learn and to grow. So it, it's, I'm, I'm excited for them. And for those of you out there listening, I'm excited for you to check this out because we are absolutely passionate about this. Aisha, this has been a pleasure. I've enjoyed having you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me, Tomas. I, I just love talking about iAwesome. I could talk about it all day and all night. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy about it. And the interesting thing is I sit here and, and people say, you know, you created something amazing. And I'm like, I didn't create anything. Yeah. I just held space for it, for it mm -hmm. to happen on its own. I really believe it's its own entity now. Like it's, it's sort of, it just tells me what it wants and I'm just doing it. <laughs> so. All right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, and, and as you said at the top of the, of the broadcast, it's the healer that's actually the client. So it's the right. healer that's being healed. And that really brings it full circle. Yes. 
I love that. Okay. Well, Aisha, this has been a, a real pleasure, guys. This has been Decide to Transform with Aisha Hogan. And come visit us at iAwesome, I-A-U-S-M, iAwesome.com. Everybody have a great rest of your day. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you.